The song just simply says, if he doesn't do anything else, he's already done enough. Bishop Brown wrote this song for me. Hallelujah. Going home, y'all, old school. <laughs> if the Lord never does anything else for me, 
Good evening, Cornerstone, and thank you so very much for joining us for our 2022 Watch Night service. We're so excited that God has blessed us to have another year uh, to celebrate his goodness and his faithfulness in our lives. And so we invite you to join us now as we do our virtual Watch Night service. We're looking forward to a great word being preached by uh, Reverend Alan Scott, to our choir ministering to us, to the scripture reading, and finally our closing prayer for 2022 and leading us into 2023. And so we thank you so much for joining us. Hope you will uh, invite your family to come and be a part of this worship experience. And um, we want to wish you a happy, happy new year. God bless you, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Pastor, for that introduction. I would like to come to you with a welcome. Welcome, Cornerstone family and friends, to our night watch service. We thank God that he has brought us a long way. Thank him for bringing us into a new year. God, we, we thank you for all that you have done for us and will continue to do. You're welcome once, you're welcome twice, you're welcome, welcome, welcome. Now we will have a scripture and a prayer by Brother Greg Reynolds. The scripture tonight will be coming from Matthew chapter 7, and I will be reading verses 21 through 28. Not everyone who, who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will say to them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evil doers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built a house on sand. The rain came down, the storm rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teacher of the law. Father God, we thank you now for your many blessings. We thank you for this night you have given us another year Father, for our health and strength and how you have continued to keep us and how you have blessed us, Father God. And by faith, Father God, you've strengthened us just to live for you another year, year. And we just pray now you bless this house, Father God, bless all who seek you. We ask this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Greg, we thank you for the scripture and the prayer. Now we will have a selection from our choir.
so amazing.
in heaven, hallowed be your holy name. Give us this day, oh, our daily bread, and forgive as we forgive. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as in heaven. Let your glory come, shining like the sun, yeah, your kingdom. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. Remind our hearts you're always with us. We will never be a Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, yeah, on earth as in heaven, yeah, let your glory come, shining like the sun, your kingdom For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever will sing. Forever we'll proclaim, yeah. Forever your kingdom. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever will sing. Forever will proclaim. Forever your kingdom. Shining light.
like the sun your kingdom reigns. we thank you choir for those selections give our choir a hand we will have our sermon now by Reverend Scott he will be coming from Luke for, uh, 6 46 through 49 his subject live your life for the will of God amen and amen and here it is again at the end of a year and when we get to the end of a year we have a tendency to want to reflect, we want to look back. But not only do we want to look back at what has happened over the past year, it's also a time to look forward in anticipation of what is going to happen in the days and weeks and months to come. And we just pray mightily that whatever I've gone through in 2022, that I have learned something that I've gained some insight. I don't want to repeat. Remember, I tell you all the time, God does not have social promotion. You have to pass the tests that come our way in order to move to the next level when it comes to God. So as we get ready for our message for tonight, let's have us a word of prayer. Father, we're truly grateful that you are the God who have kept us through all of 2022, we recognize, God, there's some people who celebrated last year and they, their name is not where they can answer on tonight. And so we are grateful, God, that we are counted in the land of the living. We have another opportunity for you to use us to do something mighty for the kingdom. And so, God, we pray mightily that you will be with those who whose heart are a little heavy tonight because they're missing someone, they're missing a loved one. Maybe they're in the midst of the storm right now, God. Maybe they're going through some changes and they just don't know which way to turn. We recognize it's not by chance that they're here tonight. It's not by chance that they're, they're seeing this because you want to speak directly into our situations. And so God, we ask that you open our eyes that we've not seen things in this familiar passage tonight. God, we ask that you will prepare and unclog our ears that we can hear from heaven. But most of all, God, prepare our hearts. Prepare our hearts that your word would fall on fertile ground, that we'll grow stronger and more like you. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. So if you would join me in the book of Luke. The book of Luke, chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. And if you would go down near the end of the chapter, starting around verse number 46. So Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49. And the verse read is following. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say. Whoever comes to me and hears my saying and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug a deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the floods arose, the streams beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it. For it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built his house on the earth without a foundation against which the streams beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. As we move into the year 2023, I want you to think about this thought as 
watch this, as my theme going into the year 2023. Live your life for the will of God. Live your life for the will of God. You know, over the past few years, over the past, since 2020, things have been different. I, I don't know if you've noticed that. Things have been a lot different. And as we come out of the, the pandemic era and we move into what most people consider to be back to normal, you, you get to see a whole lot of things because we're living in a time of a new normal. There's still people who walk around, they have their mask on, there's still social distancing because things are in the air. And there are a lot of people who, who, are, who are walking around as if nothing has ever happened. But we're, things aren't quite the same pre-pandemic age. But in this passage, there are a few things that I want us to, to pay close attention to, and I want us to see what we can glean going into this new year. One of the first things, one of the first words that popped out at me is in the opening. It says, why? Luke is writing, and, and you know, Luke, the physician, he, he's, he's detailed, but, but he doesn't write nearly as much about this particular passage as you'll find in, in Matthew. When Matthew talks about it, he goes into a lot more detail, so we know that Luke is strategic about his writing. And so the first word that jumped out to me, it says, why? Because Jesus is asking a question. And we've said before, when Jesus asks a question, it's not because he doesn't know the answer. He's asking the question so that we will ponder, why? Why are people calling him Lord, Lord? Jesus wants to say, why do you call me Lord, Lord? You're calling me that. And that has a significance. Notice the name is repeated twice. They didn't just say, you are my Lord. They said, Lord, Lord. And, and repeating the name Lord, Lord implies, it implies a sign of intimacy, a closeness. When you repeat something, something is repeated biblically, it is a sign that there is some closeness involved. And, and to give you a quick shot at that. Let's just look at a few passages and, and we'll look back at Abraham. Remember in, in Genesis 22, uh, 11 through 12, it says, God said, Abraham, Abraham. And remember, he was talking to Abraham because Abraham had put that hand up. He was getting ready to slice his son's neck. And he says, lay not your hand on the lad. Don't touch him. God is talking to Abraham at the time he saw Abraham, Abraham, don't, don't touch him. He says, now I know. There's something about knowing. You, when you say you know somebody, there's, there's a closeness in knowing. There's a closeness there's that, that, that intimate that you know. It's one thing to say that I know Michael Jordan. I can say that. I can tell you that I've even sat at the same table with Michael Jordan. But I don't know Mike. In our college days, we, we would gather in places that were similar because we were all college students and, and we would hang out in the same places. And, and he would be uh, in Asheville with his friend Buzz Peterson at the time. And so we hung out together. But I don't know Mike. I'm acquainted with him. In order to know someone, you have to spend time with them. You have to have a relationship with them. In Exodus chapter 3, you hear God calling Moses, Moses, and he repeats it over. He repeats the name Moses, Moses, because there was a relationship that is being developed between God and Moses like none other. When, when scripture points this out, it's, it's time for us to take heed. But why? Because in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10, Samuel, Samuel. God calls out to him. And we know that the walk that God and Samuel had together was a close and intimate walk. Now, watch this. It's not always from, from God to us, but in, in, in 2 Samuel chapter 18, guess what? We find King David after he had heard that his son Absalom had just died. 
chapter 18, verse 33, he would say, Absalom, Absalom, his son, out of a place of anguish, even when his son tried to take over, even though his son tried to kill him, that's still his son. And he's saying, Absalom, Absalom. And so biblically, we get an idea that when the word is repeated, that it implies something more than just a name. It implies more than just mere words, that there's something deeper that's involved. And in Matthew 27, we even see Jesus model that for us. He's on the cross and he's saying, my father, my father. My God, my God, intimacy, the relationship. And it's in that context that Jesus picks up here and he says to them, why? Why are you saying, Lord, Lord, as if you and I have that kind of relationship. We can't have that kind of relationship. Why? Because look at the words behind that. He says, <laughs> he says, and here's my sayings and does them. You call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do. You don't do what I require, what I've asked you to. It's a quick reminder that action speaks louder than words. And, and so if we're really going to get the full idea of what Jesus is saying here, then we have to go to Matthew chapter 7. So flip back, if you will, to Matthew and go to chapter 7 with me. And start in verse 21. Matthew writes just a little bit more in detail. He says it this way. Not everyone who says to me, ha, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father in heaven. Let me read that verse again. Because one of the scariest verses in the Bible, here it is right in front of you. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. Watch this. He says, verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in, prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name. And done many wonderful, many wonders in your name. And I then, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye who practice lawlessness. And it's on the tail of that, that Jesus goes into this parable. He says, Therefore, whosoever hears these things of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man. What do you mean, Jesus? What are you saying to us going into to 20, 23? He's saying there are two houses that are being built. One is built on a rock. And to build on rock requires, <laughs> yeah, it requires a lot more work. It requires a lot more sacrifice. It requires a lot more effort. It requires, it requires something of the builder. It requires, it requires digging deep. It requires. And then there's a builder who builds on sand. And, and watch, watch, both houses are built. And, and it didn't give us a description of how the houses look. So in today's context, I, 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 I imagine a big fancy house. 
And you can build a big fancy house, but, but if you don't build it on the right foundation, it doesn't matter how much you put into it, how much you invest in the house. See, that's where a lot of people have fallen short over the past years. They're investing in the house and under, not understanding that the house is only good as the foundation that it stands on. There are a couple of pictures that are on the screen. A picture of a house that's built on the rock, and it doesn't matter what storms come its way, and you have a house that's built on sand. And, and understand that storms are coming. You may not be, you may not be in the midst of a storm at the very moment. But if you have had a few birthdays, if you've shared a little bit of life, here's the one thing that you know. You do know that storms are coming. So you're either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or you're headed towards a storm. But life has a way of reminding us that we're human. And if you look over the past few years, life has a way of teaching us that we don't get to make the, the last choice. We don't get to say that we're sovereign because there's something greater than mankind. I would say just our country was brought to, brought to its knees over the past few years. But we've seen this situation affect the globe. And here's what I want to remind us as we move forward. Watch this. There comes a place where my relationship with Christ has to take priority over everything else. My relationship with Christ, not just the verbal affirmation. Because you see people who say, Lord, Lord. It's, it's like you've heard people say all the time. I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And you know what? They're right. They don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Because salvation is through faith alone in Christ alone. Salvation, your salvation, my salvation is in Christ alone. Through his finished work at the cross. But let me, let me remind you of this. You also don't have to go home to be married. But stay away long enough and your relationship will be affected. Stay away from the fellowship long enough and your relationship will be affected. Because Hebrews remind us not to forsake one another, not to forsake fellowshipping together, that we need one another. We need one another. Because in any good relationship, in any, watch how I say this, in any good, healthy relationship, those who are in a healthy relationship, you focus on what's important to the other person. When you find a good, healthy, you notice how I keep saying that, good, healthy marriage. You find two people who are trying to outserve one another. You find two people who are more concerned about making the other person happy than they are having their own way. And that model is set biblically. How do I know it was set biblically? Flip over to, to, to John 3.16. Because what you, what you find is that actions speak louder than words. There are a lot of people who have the gift of gab. You, 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 there are a lot of people who can talk up a mean game. But in John 3, 16, he says it this way. For God so loved. He loved, guess what? That he gave. He, he put his love into action. Love is an action. It's not just something that I talk about. Remember in Matthew, 
We found a group of people who were telling Jesus, didn't we do this for you? Didn't we do that for you? Can't you tell that we are yours because of what we've done? They're talking a mean game. Well, why is that? Because there are a lot of folk who do things for you for the wrong reason. There are a lot of people who do stuff so that they can hold it over your head. Don't you just hate when folk throw up in your face what they've done for you? And you didn't even ask them. And then they want to hold you hostage to what they've done on your behalf. God died over 2,000 years ago for us. Christ hung on the cross. He's not holding it over your head. He gives you a choice. He gives you a choice. You can accept, but you don't have to. And the people who think that they can earn their way into a relationship See, we've been so used to manipulating, networking, moving up, moving around, trying to make stuff happen. Unfortunately, we treat God the same way. But in 2023, let's get back to the basics. Let's get back to loving God for who he is, not for what he does. For who he is, not for the blessing. For who he is, not for the healing. For who he is, not for prosperity. In a healthy relationship, I love you simply because. And I can't always tell you a thousand and one reasons why I love you. Because when you start to list, here's why I love you. I love you because of your hair, and I love you because of your eyes, and I love you. Well, what happens when the hair changes color? Or it changes texture? What happens when you put glasses in front of those eyes and so you can't see them as clearly as you did before? Does that affect love? Love goes beyond mere words. And there's a biblical reference. I want us to, to, to get a quick look at this. In Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13, you can go there, but I, I'm just going to give us a quick little hint. There were 10 virgins, and five of them did not take extra oil with them, and five did. And they were waiting for the bridegroom. They were waiting. They, they were doing the, the, the duty that was set before them. But, but, but five of them, watch this, five of them did not take God serious enough. They didn't treat him as if he was important. How do you know? Because they didn't prepare. It's a dangerous thing when we treat the Lord like he's unimportant. We treat the things of God as important, but we treat God as if he does not really matter. We're more into the things of God. And that has been magnified over the past few years. And because of technology, you see it happening more and more and more and more. Why? Because you can see people who are on television and they are talking about the fact that, guess what? I am pro-family. Family is highly important. Yet they just went to divorce court. I'm pro-life. I can't believe that you would kill an innocent baby. And yet they would pay for abortions. God created marriage and and, and marriage is, is high. And yet 
they would legislate two men marrying and two women marrying. And I don't see that in the context of God. Marriage is the institution that God made. And you hold the marriage up high, but you won't hold God's word to the standard. There's a problem with that. And you have people who are hollering, Lord, Lord, didn't we do all this stuff for you? And he says, depart from me. For I never knew you. What you're talking about doesn't have any merit. Because it's empty words. You worship me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. And he says on that, they, there are a lot of people. He didn't say there were just a few. He said there's a lot of people who fall into that category. So as we move into 2023, what we want to do, we don't want to keep asking folk, do you know Jesus? Because that's the Christian cliche. Do you know Jesus for yourself? A more important word, a more important sentence should be, does Jesus know you? Does Jesus know you? In 2023, make sure that Jesus knows you. It's not enough for you to say, I know Jesus. Jesus said, guess what? The demons in hell know there's a God and tremble. Because everybody who's talking about God is not on a close, intimate. It's not in a close, intimate relationship with him. So as we look in the mirror, because James will say God's word is a mirror. Will you be like that person who looks in the mirror and see all the stuff that the word reflects that's out of alignment with our Lord? And then just keep on living like I want to live. First Peter chapter four, Peter would say it like this. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same mind, for he has suffered in the flesh, has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live, watch this, the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walk in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, Reveries, drinking parties, and abominable, abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood. Let 2023 be the year that you put some things in your history that you walk away from that you leave behind. And the word of God is here to reflect that for us. Not only do I need to put some things behind us, but there's some things I need to put in front of us. And in 1 John, one of the things that John would have us to put on says, beloved, do not be, believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many, watch this, false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come from the flesh of, is of God. 
And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Look at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So I'm going to put off some stuff, but I need to put on some love. So as I move into this new year, let us focus our attention on how much we can love folk. Because our demonstration of loving folk really exposes which house we have built. We've built a house on sand or We've built a house on the rock. And so when you hear folk spewing out hate, guess what? That's not of God. And they're not of God. Because God is love. I pray mightily this new year. That as we look in the mirror, that our Cornerstone Church family will focus 2023 and dedicate it to live your life for the will of God, which means I have to die to myself and take up his cross daily. Let us pray. Father, we're just so grateful. We're so grateful for time together to come to your word to be able to study, to be able to see what you would say to us moving forward. It's been a rough three years, God. And guess what? Things appear to be getting even worse on the global horizon. But if we focus on you and we focus on kingdom work and the kingdom agenda, that you get all the glory You get all the honor. You get all the praise. In Jesus' holy name, in every heart, say amen. Amen, church. Amen. We'll have a a selection from the choir. Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance sealed by every stone. Messiah still and all alone. Oh, praise. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, our God. Oh, oh, oh. Then 
on the third at break of dawn the son of heaven rose again oh trampled death where is your sting the angels roar for Christ our King yeah yeah oh praise the name of the Lord our God oh praise his name forevermore for endless days we will sing your praise oh Lord oh Lord our God hallelujah thank you Jesus he shall return in robes of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus face Sing that chorus one more time. Oh, praise the name. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing your praise. Oh, Lord. our lovely choir for that selection. Now we will have a prayer and the benediction by Brother Brandon Rowe. And we'll see you in the new year. Thank you, Phyllis. Thank you for that awesome word, my dear brother. Thank you, choir, for such awesome music. Now we are getting ready to close this new year out, uh, close this year out and go into the new year. And we're going to close this year out praying and go into the new year praying, giving God some glory and honor. So we're going to pray for uh, the next few minutes and allow God to just bless our house. You know, in Chronicles uh, chapter 7, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, Solomon was giving offerings before God and before the people. And he stretched out his hands and he began to ask the Lord and make petitions before the Lord. In brief, he began to ask God, if we get in trouble, Father, whether it's with our enemies or you send us out to war, if there's a famine or there's pestilence, Father, when we pray, and we turn from our ways, please forgive us and heal us. Lord God, if we find ourselves in some sticky situations and we, we catch ourselves and we turn to you, heal us, Father. And after he had prayed this long prayer of all these different things, the Lord came and he answered and he says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, Solomon, I will 
forgive their sins I'll heal their land and we find ourselves in that same situation today going into 2023 before we ask God for anything we want to give him thanks and then we want to confess our sins we want to let the Lord know that we love him and that we appreciate him and that we have gone astray in so many different ways and we need to turn our hearts back to him so brothers and sisters as we enter into this prayer I want us to begin to confess the sins of our house confess the sins uh, 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 that that we know that are going on in our house so that God can just come in like a flood and bring about his blessing so let us pray now father we honor you and we bless you we didn't know how we were going to get out of the pandemic but you brought us through you have been so so faithful father you have been so so mighty you have always upheld your end of the bargain your covenant you have always shown us love and compassion Lord, you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And so we say thank you and glorify you. Lord God, you have kept us in our right mind this whole entire year. You have brought us through trials seen and unseen. Lord God, when we were in the fire, you were there with us. When we were in the flood, you were there with us. Whenever the doctor called and gave us the bad news, you were there with us. Whenever the doctor gave the good news and said you are healed, you were there with us. You are true to your word. You never leave us. You never forsake us. And that's why we lift our hands to you and we say thank you and we bless you. Lord God, we begin to confess now that you are great God. You are awesome God. We confess our sins, Father, we've sinned. There's things that we've done that we should not have done, things that we've said that we should not have said. Lord, we confess those things to you. Lord, when we were not peacemakers, we confess those things to you. When, Lord God, we were not ready to make amends with the enemy, with those even in our own house, we confess those things to you. Lord God, when we spoke out of anger and we did not go back and apologize, we confess those things to you. We leave them now on the altar. Everything that we have uh, done in 2022 that, Lord God, we failed to confess, we leave that right now on the altar. And as we enter into 2023, Father, we pray that you would create in us a clean heart and that you will renew a right spirit inside of us. We begin to pray for our community now. Lord, we begin to pray for the homeless, that Lord God, you would bring about a change, that you would bring about peace in their hearts, in their minds, and in their souls, that you would bring reconciliation between you and all men. Lord, we begin to pray for those who are in the neighborhood who are on the corner dealing drugs, who are finding themselves in a trap house. Father, we begin to pray that your anointing would find them in those places and bring them out to your glory. That you would bring them to you, that they would fall on their knees. And Father, begin to confess that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. We pray for even the prostitutes that walk the streets. That Lord God, that you would just not push them away, but you would bring them close to you. We pray that you would bring reconciliation and relationships there, Father, between you and those, Lord God, who have gone astray. We not only pray for the streets, Father God, but we pray for this house. Lord God, we're asking that you would bring healing even in the cornerstone body. If we push you out of any committee, if, Lord God, we push you off of any board, we invite you in and we say, have your way. Lord God, we're asking that you would be so present in this house, that you would bring about healing and deliverance in this house. We pray for our pastor in this new year. We're asking that you would allow your sweet anointing to fall upon him, that you would speak your words through his mouth, oh Father God, that people may be healed, that people may be delivered, that people may be set free. 
We're praying for those who are in the parking lot, Lord God, on this year, that even as people begin to walk in, they can sense your presence and know that you are doing a great thing. We honor you and we bless you for the work that you're going to do in this place in 2023. We declare and decree even now that the best is yet to come for Cornerstone. We pray multiplied blessings upon this house and upon those who are faithful to your service in this place. It's 2023 now. The best is yet to come. We stand here and let, and we say, Father, have your way. Not our will be done, but your will be done. We're expecting, no, oh, Father God, great and magnificent things from you in this year. We confess these things. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Happy New Year, brothers and sisters.